Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I am bringing you yet another showdown. You guys know how much I love a good showdown. Well, I do not like preparing for showdowns because they take so much work. I'm typically getting footage for weeks and weeks, if not months sometimes, just because of the number of products I usually like to include in showdowns to make sure that I'm doing an extensive comparison for you guys. And when it comes to something like a concealer, I want to be able to wear that and test that multiple times to make sure that I'm really like really giving it a fair shot and when I'm doing that I like to keep everything consistent so that the comparison is as equal as possible so like same exact moisturizer sunscreen eye cream foundation powder everything has to be exactly the same and for someone like me who has so many products that gets old but it's necessary so that I can make sure I'm giving you guys the best possible showdown and that's exactly what I was doing behind the scenes to prepare for this one which is a new New concealer showdown. So many concealers have been launching over the past several months and so many of these concealers have incredible claims and incredible reviews. Now that I think of it, I feel like almost all of these concealers with the exception of a few have very good reviews. So that definitely makes it really difficult to figure out which new concealer is going to be best for you, if any. So to prevent you guys from having to purchase and test out all 10 of these concealers yourselves, I have done that for you. I have 10 new concealers here that I've been testing out for months at this point. Some have not been out for months, but the ones that have, I've been testing for a long time, incorporating more along the way, getting footage, writing down my thoughts. It's been a lot, but I am finally ready thank God, to deliver this concealer showdown. So as always with videos like this, I of course do apply all 10 of these concealers on camera so that you guys can get as good of a feel as possible for each one. I show you what all of them look like without setting powder applied. I show you what they look like after I've applied setting powder and I show you what they look like after a full day of wear. And then of course, we're gonna talk details like coverage, finish, how they wear, and my overall thoughts. We are going to discuss them in rank order. So let's just start off this video, shall we? with last place. Actually, before I say what last place is, I feel like I need to make a quick disclaimer. And that is that I would love for everybody to please remember that these are all just my own opinions. This shouldn't be taken seriously. If I don't like something that you love, that's great. I'm glad you love it. I want you to love what you're buying. Of course, I just like to do videos like this because I know that we all have different preferences when it comes to makeup or whatever I'm doing a showdown on. And I feel like that's the beauty of a video like this because I may not love something but it looks like it could be something that you would love. Or maybe I really, really love something that wouldn't be the best fit for you. So hopefully regardless of my personal opinions on each one, this is still informative for you and can help you to figure out which is going to be the absolute best fit for your needs. And in case you're curious, I would say my skin leans oily, but I never really deal with my under eye area getting oily. It's kind of just like normal in that area. Last place for me, unfortunately, is the new Kulfi Main match concealer. This concealer comes in 21 shades and the shade that I was kindly sent in PR is Mi Tai Soul. The brand describes the texture of this concealer as being lightweight and ultra comfortable. And while it's not the lightest weight concealer in this video, it's not something that's thick either. So it's not super thin. It's not super thick. It's kind of somewhere in between. And I would agree. It's definitely comfortable. This is supposed to have medium but buildable coverage. And for me personally, I'm not really able to get this built up much past medium coverage. In looking at the footage, I can definitely still see some of my dark circles peeking through, but not nearly as much as some of the lighter coverage concealers in this video. This is supposed to have a radiant finish, and I do definitely think it looks nice and radiant or illuminate. I was gonna say illuminant, no, nope. luminant without any sort of like pearlescent effect, just like, yeah, bright, radiant. I definitely think it looks that way upon initial application. It's really pretty. So I was excited about this, but unfortunately for me, this was the worst wear out of all of these concealers, which is why I put it in last place. And I was so confused about that because I feel like I've heard from others that love this, that it holds up so, so well. This one did end up creasing pretty heavily on me and something that I think made the creasing look even more emphasized is the fact that product kind of like built up in the creases. I feel like in looking at this footage, I've realized there's a difference between concealers that just kind of like settle in your creases or your fine lines and those that settle and then start to build up there. And the ones that do build up a bit definitely look worse. And on top of that, I definitely did notice some separation specifically on one eye underneath the inner part. That coverage kind of just completely broke up and 
it just looks a bit dry. There are definitely some dry patches. So unfortunately for me, this just does not agree with my skin for whatever reason, which is a huge bummer because again, it has great reviews. I know so many people love this, but I unfortunately am not one of those people. Hi baby, you're so gorgeous. I love it, girly. Second to last, which I feel like is honestly kind of tied in last place for me is the Lancome Care and Glow Concealer, which is the newest launch out of all of these. This comes in 24 shades and the shade that I picked up is 125W, but I did have a really hard time finding a shade that I felt like would be a good match for me. I can't remember the day I applied this. My self-tan might have already been faded a lot, so it might have worked better, but for all of these, I forgot to mention, these are all my self-tan shades, and I felt like I couldn't find the perfect self-tan shade for me within this range, so I picked up something a little bit lighter because everything else just was way too dark. The brand describes the texture of this as a creamy liquid, and it is definitely liquidy and one of the lightest weight concealers. It's not something that I feel I would immediately think of as creamy just because of the fact that it's a bit more fluid in consistency. This is supposed to have medium buildable coverage, but I would say this is not going to give you any more than medium coverage. If that, I would consider this to be like light to maybe medium and it definitely is lighter in coverage on me, which just is not enough for my dark circles. It's supposed to have a soft glow natural finish, which I would agree with. I'd say that that's probably spot on. Definitely not super radiant. A lot of these concealers do have like a very brightening radiant effect. This one not quite as much, which is interesting because it's called Care and Glow. So while I wasn't super impressed after initially applying this, like it wasn't one of those concealers that I put on and was like, whoa, I love this right away. Definitely nothing like that because I do prefer a bit more coverage than this has. While that was the case, I certainly wasn't expecting to dislike it as much as I ended up disliking it by the end of the day. This just doesn't look great under my eyes. The creasing isn't crazy. It's not quite as much as Colfi. I would say it's more moderate levels of creasing, but I feel like this just looks so dry under my eyes and like there are some dry patches and I don't know. I really struggle to not powder my under eye area because I feel like more often than not, I end up with much heavier creasing than I would if I didn't powder and my mascara smudges. And I actually did try this one without powder and it was still creasy by the end of the day and just it, it didn't look great. So this is something I would consider to be a fail for me. Dang. Next, we have the Gucci Multi-Use Crease Proof and Hydrating Concealer. I do not think I own any makeup from Gucci. That's not normally a brand I feel like I would be super excited to purchase makeup from, but I have heard such good things about this concealer. So I was like, all right, let's see what you got. This concealer comes in 40 shades and the shade that I picked up is Fair Medium 24N. Hold on, 24N Fair Medium. There we go. This is described as a lightweight concealer that effortlessly blends, and I would agree it's definitely on the lighter weight side and thinner in texture. Something to note about this one is that it does dry down relatively quickly, at least it did for me, so I would recommend applying one eye at a time, or one under eye area at a time. Excuse me, you two. I have dogs wrestling in the back. Can you see them? Where are you, little? Stinkers. Oh, what are you guys doing? What are you doing, Quincy boy? This Quincy. What are you doing? Are you wrestling Elsie? Come here, girl. You say hi to everybody. Oh, she does not want to say hi. She wants to play. Sorry. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. I would apply one under eye area, blend it out, set it if you want to, then move on to the next. That only happened to me with one other concealer in this video, which I will call out when we get there. But aside from that, I had zero issues when it came to applying these concealers. Everything was very easy to use, seamless, very blendable, which is why I feel like I don't need to say that for every single one. But back to this. This is supposed to have medium to full coverage, and I do not agree with that at all. For me, I feel like it's light to medium and again similar to Lancome it's leaning lighter it's not as light as Lancome more coverage than that but I cannot get this to full coverage the other thing I don't really agree with is the way the brand describes the finish of this they say it's natural blurred has a second skin finish and while it doesn't look horrible Basically, immediately I noticed it settling into lines, which just isn't really an issue I had. I don't think with any of these other concealers except for one. And I also feel like it looked quite a bit drier than the rest of these concealers upon initial application. So it just wasn't giving me blurred second skin finish. And by end of day, again, I don't think the results were horrible. I just wasn't wowed by them. I had moderate levels of creasing and I still thought it looked dry compared to some of these other concealers. 
So definitely not my favorite, which is a big bummer because this one's pricey. Next is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Smooth and Blur Undetectable Under Eye Concealer. This comes in 20 shades and I definitely had a hard time finding a good shade for my skin tone. I picked up 1.4Y, but I do feel like it's just, it's not quite right. It's too light, a little too yellow. I don't know. It's just like, it's not quite right. The texture of this is described as a feather light gel cream texture. And I think that's actually the perfect description. I was feeling it earlier and having a hard time thinking of the word to describe it with. Velvet was the first thing that came to my mind, but I was like, that's not quite it. I feel like gel cream is a better description. Definitely not something really creamy at all, super lightweight, kind of that like jelly quality. I mean, as much as a concealer can have that jelly quality, like comparatively. This is supposed to have light to medium to full coverage. They say it has seamless buildable coverage that you can build and blend as you wish, but I wasn't able to do it as I wish because certainly could not get this up to full coverage. Coverage, I would say light to medium at most. It's definitely one of the most light in coverage out of all of these. I'm looking at how much my dark circles are popping compared to the others and yeah, that's not full coverage. I'll just say that. This is supposed to have an undetectable real skin finish and I do think the initial finish is really pretty. I think I just wasn't loving it at first because of the color and the amount of coverage, but the actual finish is really, really nice. The wear on this wasn't terrible. I would say it also had moderate amount of creasing on this one it's interesting because it's less like down here in these lines and more up here towards my waterline and again i have a spot where coverage just kind of faded and went a little bit patchy so overall i would say it's just one that I don't love. It's just not for me. Natasha Denona, oh my God. I wanted to love this so bad and like I did and then I didn't. This is the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer, which I feel like so many people are obsessed with. I'm jealous. It comes in 50 shades and the shade that I picked up and apply in this video underneath my eyes is N7. But I wanna make sure I'm calling out that the shade that I swatch on the back of my hand is different and that shade is Y1. I just totally spaced out the last time I was giving away PR and because I knew I didn't love this concealer, I put it in my giveaway pile, forgetting I needed to swatch it for this video. So my sister let me borrow hers so that you guys could at least see what that looks like swatched. 50 Shades is incredible though. I definitely want to give them a shout out for that. That's amazing. This is described as a lightweight concealer with a flexible feel and I do, yeah, I would say like flexible sounds like the right word. I had a really hard time thinking of how to describe this because it's not like thick and creamy, but it's also not something that's super thin and fluid and serum-y. Like compared to some of these others that do have more of that serum-y quality, this is creamier, but again, it's not a thick creamy concealer. It's just kind of in between. This is supposed to have medium buildable coverage and I do actually agree with that. With the amount of product that I applied for this video to try to keep things consistent, I would say it's like medium leaning full, almost full. You can see See my dark circles peeking through a tiny bit peeking through. I don't know what I just said, but I feel like it's the perfect amount because it keeps it looking a little bit more natural while still offering enough coverage for me. So like coverage was perfection. And this is described as having a natural luminous matte finish. They say it's flawless, airbrushed, weightless, natural. And I feel like flawless and natural usually can't coexist in a complexion product. Like you're usually giving up one to get the other. But in this case, I actually completely agree with that. There's something about this that does look luminous and more skin-like while also looking flawless and like that soft diffused airbrushed look. I really really love this when I first apply it. I think it just looks beautiful which is why I was so so sad by the wear of this. I feel like within just a few hours, this starts to look not great on me, which is interesting because I feel like for most of these other ones, they have longer staying power than that. But this I would say has moderate to heavy amounts of creasing. And this is one of those that does kind of build up in the creases as well. So it just, it emphasizes that creasing situation. The coverage also does start to break up for me towards the inner corners of my eyes, especially when I compare that to the initial application you couldn't see those dark circles peeking through at first. I mean, a tiny bit you could, but not this much. So this one just does not wear well on my skin, which I'm so sad about because it looks beautiful at first. It really does. And 
gosh, I feel like this is so many people's current favorite concealer, but not mine. Next, we have the Glossier Stretch Balm Concealer. This comes in 32 shades, and I picked up the shade Light 2. I think it's interesting that this is described as a stretchy balm because when you just feel it in the pot, I would say it just feels like any other creamy balm. Like it's not particularly slippery, but something about this does work really well when you're blending it, and I do kind of get what they mean. It has this ability to stretch as you blend. The coverage of this concealer is just listed as buildable, which I feel like as a consumer, I assume that that means I could build this up or down in any way that I want to, but I can't really build this up much at all. It's definitely lighter in coverage on me, like light to medium, but not even fully medium, I feel like. If I'm gonna be wearing concealer, I just like it to have a bit more coverage for my dark circles. It's supposed to have a dewy, glowy finish, and I do think it looks dewy and glowy, but this is the other concealer that I notice pretty much immediate line settling with. And by end of day, I would say this has moderate amounts of creasing and some of that coverage definitely fades, which just makes this not my favorite in this video because again, I like a little bit more coverage and while I feel like it actually did look better in person than it's looking in my screenshots of the results. It still was not the best one in this video. Next is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. This is available in 22 shades and the brand actually sent me all the shades. I think that's just how the PR package went out, which I don't love when brands do that. I feel like it's pretty wasteful. The shade that I chose out of all of them is 200. I feel like the distribution of these shades is not good enough. They have so many in the medium to tan range and then the light shades I remember being very, very polarizing in terms of the undertone, like pulling really, really peach or really, really yellow. And then there's just not enough in the deep to dark skin tone range either. The texture of this is something I would describe as on the creamier side and not super thin, but not super thick, kind of in between. This one dries down very quickly and starts to get a bit tacky actually, so this is the other one that I would recommend applying one side at a time before moving on. This is claimed to have medium coverage but be a buildable formula, and I would agree with that. Medium buildable is what I get. And I also agree with the way they describe the finish, which is supposed to be natural and skin-like. I do think so many of these concealers just have that fresher skin-like look. I really like that concealer technology seems to be evolving and we're getting concealers that don't look so much like makeup under the eyes. If we could get the gray all day wear, that would be the next step. This wear test was the weirdest for me because at first when I was looking at my results, just like from a viewfinder distance, I was like, wow, this still looks really nice because it really doesn't have a ton of creasing. I would say it has minimal creasing, but up close, it just like doesn't look great. I never have issues with concealer making my skin look overly dry. And I feel like this one did up close. It just kind of separated and clung to patches in my outer corner, again, making it look like little dry patches. But it's weird how it still looks good from a normal distance, because you would think that that would make it look gross from far away, but it's one that looks fine from far away and not amazing up close. That's what I'll say. So this may be one that I play around with a few more times with different eye creams or maybe like a blurring smoothing primer, because I didn't use anything that could potentially manipulate the actual finish of this or how it settled into lines. The eye cream I used was very lightweight, no different than my moisturizer, and I did not use any sort of blurring primer. So I'd be curious to see if that solved the problem with this, because I think it looks very pretty at first. But for now, not the best. Next up is the Tower 28 Swipe Serum Concealer, which is available in 20 shades, and the shade that I have is K-Town. This is described as a lightweight serum concealer that is weightless and easy to blend, and I would agree, I love the texture of this. This. It's very thin in texture and similar in thinness, if you will, to Makeup Forever, but doesn't have that same kind of like gel element. It's a bit more drier to the touch than that. It's supposed to have medium buildable coverage, but this is another that I think doesn't go more than medium on my skin. It's like light to medium. The finish is supposed to be hydrating, skin-like, natural, and it's not supposed to cling to dry patches. It does look very fresh under the eyes initially. This is one that I really, really love at first, even though it 
it doesn't have quite as much coverage as some of the others that I love. Something about the way that this looks I just think is beautiful. But unfortunately, this does settle into lines. I would say it's minimal to moderate in terms of creasing. This is another one where there's not as much creasing on my lower lines here. It's more like up here by my waterline and another that I lose some coverage by my inner corner. So while this still isn't the absolute best in terms of performance out of all of these concealers, I do still think this is a pretty one and can understand why this is one so many people are loving. And obviously I'm heavily scrutinizing all of the wear test footage. I think I'm just looking at everything with a very, very detailed eye and that's not necessarily something you're normally going to do when you're wearing concealer on a day-to-day -day basis. So keep that in mind as well. Second to last, we have a concealer that nobody is talking about, but I was sent in PR, so I wanted to include it. It is the Iconic London Radiant Concealer and Brightening Duo. So this is unique in the sense that it has two products in one. On one end, it has this brightening, like creamy stick that I am not including in the review of this video because none of the other concealers have that. I'm just sticking to the other end, which has the concealer. I will say because of this dual ended thing, I low key hate the applicator. I just, it's so small, I don't like it. But the concealer itself, is beautiful, which I'm sure you've gathered by now, given that this is in second place. This only comes in 14 shades, which is definitely not enough. The shade that I have is light neutral, which is a really good match for me when I have self tan on. This is a creamier concealer, but it's not something I would describe as thick. It's supposed to have medium to full coverage, and I completely agree with that. If you apply too much, like maybe even the amount you normally apply, it can look makeup-y quickly. So just go in with a very small amount of product. With a small amount, I get flawless full coverage and like, whoa, flawless. But again, this is something that I don't feel looks super makeup-y. So they say this is supposed to illuminate while camouflaging imperfections to achieve a flawless skin finish and I still feel like there's something skin-like about this. I mean, maybe less than some of these others because it has more coverage, but still, it doesn't look like I have heavy amounts of concealer sitting under my eyes. At least, I don't think so. Maybe you guys think so. And the wear of this is so impressive. I actually think this wears the best out of all of the concealers in this video. It has little to no creasing. It still looks great at the end of the day. It is truly a beautiful concealer. I honestly wish they would just ditch the other stick and then come out with this in a normal size and expand the shade range and this would be seriously one of the best concealers of all time. I feel like Iconic London is such an underrated brand. They have incredible products, products I'm consistently blown away by and I feel like no one talks about them. So I hope that changes and I would love to see those changes to the concealer, but we won't, so <laughs> I don't have that much power. In first place, the winner of this concealer showdown. We've made it, where is it? It is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Hydrating and Depuffing Concealer. This is available in 31 shades and I have the shade 13 Light Neutral. I am struggling to find the perfect fair skin shade. I wanna buy it because obviously this is first place. I love it, spoiler alert. But their shades stay weird. I feel like they're better, easier to figure out than the foundations, but still just not the best. The brand says that this has a lightweight texture I don't agree with that. It's very, very creamy and not heavy, but not something that again is like serum-y lightweight. But the good thing about it is that despite the creamier texture, it does not feel heavy under the eyes. You can apply quite a bit of this and it does not look heavy. It looks fresh. It's supposed to have medium buildable, undetectable coverage. And I wrote no, literally. That's how you can tell I listened to the toast. It's full coverage, but yes, I get what they're saying with undetectable because even when I compare this to Iconic London, I can see that Iconic London, while I still think looks incredible, there's something about it that's like a little more makeup-y than house. I'm blown away by the house concealer. It is gorgeous. It's supposed to have a skin-like natural hydrating and brightening finish. Yes, 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 and yes. This is just, it's so impressive to me. Full coverage, but not makeup-y, and yet also glowy and skin-like. It's just, it's divine. I'm wearing this now, and I just had to look at it in the mirror because I feel like I'm having a hard time really grasping the wear of this. The initial footage I got of the wear did not look how it looked in person. Like, the footage made it look so bad and so creasy, and I was like, that's not 
not how it looked. And so I just had to check because I've been wearing this for a long time. And I still think this looks great. It's definitely settled into lines a little bit. I would say minimal, nothing crazy. I think it still looks really, really good. So I would say mineral, min, why do I keep doing that? Minimal to moderate creasing. It's definitely not something on me that's crease proof, but again, I feel like it still looks so good. And again, because of how insanely gorgeous this is when you first apply it and don't have setting powder, I really want to play around with this more and start to use different primers and eye creams. And this is one where I feel like I could potentially get away with wearing this without powder because I feel like I've heard people having really good luck with that. So I am definitely gonna test that with this one as well. It's not perfect, none of these are, but what can I say? I love it. All right, you guys, that is it for this concealer showdown. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful in shopping these new concealers. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Are you going to purchase any of these? Was there a concealer you were interested in purchasing that you are no longer going to buy because of what you saw in this video? Or maybe the other way around. Is there something you didn't really think you wanted to buy, but now you feel like you have to because of what you've seen here? Let me know. I'll make sure to have everything listed and linked in the description box below. And if you enjoyed this and would like to see more videos from me, more showdowns, give this video a thumbs up. What do I say after that? I'm so exhausted, you guys. I think I have to take next week off filming. It's just been a struggle. Anyway, give this a thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell, send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for all of your support and all of those things. It really does help my channel to grow, so I appreciate you so much. I was gonna say if there's anything you need from me, I clearly need a filming break. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.